thinking of. So we're considering the Broncos. Um, we're looking at the Texans mm -hmm. in the seven spot. They're in today. Oh, yeah, They're baby. in today. They boot the Bengals. The Bills are on the right-hand side of your screen. The Raiders are 5-5, five and five, as are the Colts. But let's look at that beautiful little Texans logo at the bottom of the screen. Okay. Right there in the middle, you stare at it. We have been over the last couple of years because it's been a, it's been a tough ride for the Texans. Not so much anymore, considering the last couple of weeks and how things are gone. Great win against the Bengals last week in Cincinnati. Peter, are you prepared to sit here now and consider them an AFC contender? I am, with obvious hesitation due to their youth and due to the fact it's a first-year coach and all that. But I, I think there's a little secret sauce to them that not everyone <laughs> sees and knows, and it's that they're not just rookie quarterback, rookie wide receiver Tank Dell, second-year okay. guy Nico Collins. They've got veterans in that locker room and a lot of veteran players who have played in big games. Like Shaq Mason has played in 14 different playoff games. Jerry Hughes has been in the league forever. Jimmy Ward's been on all those Niners teams. Singletary's done the runs with the Bills. Mm -hmm. Robert Woods is on this team. Sheldon Rankins is on this team. These are veteran players. We didn't even talk about guys like Shaq Griffin and Tunzil. They have so many veteran players at all the key position groups that lead those different position groups. So yes, first year coach, first year quarterback, first year wide receiver, first year defensive end and Will Anderson. I get it, and that's all very new. But like, I don't think a game is too big for Shaq Mason. He's played in huge games. I don't think a game is too big mm -hmm. for Robert Woods. He's been on multiple playoff rides. And those are the guys who are leading those position groups. So if you can give that knowledge and you can pass that down a little bit, that's great. Do you know who C.J. Stroud's backup quarterback is? Yes, Davis Mills. There. Do you know who the other one is? Mm. Case Keenum. Mm. So it's, Houston. Case Keenum's there. So yeah. it's not like we're dealing with just, all right, Stroud, it's you and a bunch of no-name guys who've never been through Case Keenum started in an NFC Championship game. So I like the fact that there are veterans in this. Do I consider them True. contenders? They're one of the top seven teams in the AFC. Sure, anyone can make a run. Do I think they're this young, neophyte, wide-eyed team that's like, oh, my gosh, a big spotlight? <laughs> no. The quarterback went to Ohio State. Their first-round pick at defense went to Alabama. Their coaches played and coached in huge games, mm -hmm. and they've got veterans all over the roster. So this is no shock to me, if anything, this team might be a little bit more prepared than we might expect over the down the stretch. That's where I was going to go too with D'Amico Ryan's, just considering the games that he could have coached in and the situations, totally. watching Shanahan handle himself mm -hmm. in certain mm -hmm. times during his time in San Francisco. Yeah, the stage doesn't seem too bright for them. It's it's a great point you bring up because you know you're so focused on the young quarterback and how is he going to handle this franchise that you know when you get drafted that high, like you're you're coming into a rebuild basically, and first year head coach, first year coordinator, first you know rookie quarterback, like. They have not blinked once at all. And as good as they have been offensively, I'm with you on this defense right now. I can't believe the turnaround that D'Amico Ryans has done with this defense. We talked about it yesterday. They were the worst defense in the league last year. The worst rushing defense, uh, certainly, at that. And yet, they've not only stopped the run. Will Anderson's making plays. They've done a great job getting after the quarterback. John Grenard had a sack uh, in, in this game, was given Orlando Brown fits against the Bengals. Mm -hmm. I think when you kind of look at that game, too, like it came down to the wire that game, but like mm -hmm. for the majority part of that game, they were dominated. Like there's Chad Griffin interception. Everybody contributed in that game, but the, the, the Texans for 45 minutes of that game, pretty much, were in control. And then, you know, the Bengals did what they did, got back into the game, but I, I think the way that they're playing on defense right now absolutely makes them a contender in the AFC, in the, in the South for sure, I think they need a, another one or two signature wins to really say, look, these guys can keep up with the cream of the crop in the entire AFC. It's incredible that they're here and we're having a Texans talk at the top of the third hour. Yeah. I really mean that as a compliment. I think so much credit goes to your boy Casario too. Like the way they have done this. Take a look at the 2021 Texans. This is just two years ago. And look at how they have completely changed their organization. Their head coach was David Culley, who was let go and has not coached since then. Davis Mills was their, their quarterback. Their receiving yards leader was Brandon Cooks, who's now mm -hmm. with the Cowboys. Their leading tackler was Kamu Gruje hill mm -hmm. who's a Panther. Their leading interceptor was Desmond King, who's not in the league. I will walk off the set. If any of you can tell me just two years ago, who was the Houston Texans' leading rusher? Who is the Houston Texans leading rusher? They have changed so much in two years. I defy any of us who live and breathe football all day to name the player. Anybody oh want to know? Was it Woodhead? Lamar Miller? Was that his name? I need a guess. Lamar is Miller's my guess. 
Lamar Miller isn't even close. No. The leading Not rusher nothing. on that team was Rex Burkhead. Burkhead. Not you know well, who was the second gosh. leading rusher? Mark Ingram. Like our guy Mark that Ingram we love. Was on the Mark Ingram was on the Texans. Uh, David Johnson was on that team. What I'm, what I'm talking about is like all these guys are gone. Half of them are retired, including the head coaches, out of football. And here they are in the playoff picture with a rookie and a rookie head coach. And I know, Peter, they got some gristled guys. They got some babies out there who are playing ball. And they have changed it so fast. So These rehauls, they can take a decade sometimes. Some yeah. teams are overhauling mm -hmm. for a decade and a half. I think the front office has done an amazing job. They found the coach and they found the quarterback, and I think they can beat anybody now. Incredible. Rex Burkhead, I love you. Rex, wow. That's crazy. Rex Burkhead. The, you just saying the word quarterback, I was just waiting, waiting, waiting. We went all the way around that table just now, and I think that's a testament to how the Texans are playing in big games is we talked about all these other facets of their team before we even got to C.J. Stroud, and he's been such a huge yeah. part of this. It's We're week 10, and we have seen very little to no panic from this rookie quarterback who everyone had painted on the wall through his draft process and everything that was said about him and the cognitive S2 test and how he can't, you know, he can't perform in these big games. Look at what Watch he's out for an, those Ohio State he's quarterbacks. Just another Ohio State quarterback, exactly. And he has lived up to, yep. exceeded, and then set a new standard for what a rookie quarterback is supposed to do when they arrive in this league. Personally, I think it also has a lot to do with just the simpatico that we are seeing between Bobby Slowick and D'Amico Ryans and C.J. Stroud. It's, it seems like a match made in heaven, and sometimes it just doesn't work out that way when you draft a young guy like this. But hats off to C.J. Stroud as well for his development, his wherewithal within the pocket, and his decision-making, his maturity, his prowess. It's just shocking for a rookie quarterback. I'd like to see some simpatico in Carolina with Bryce Young. That's right? Rough.